Hi, my name is Alejandro Pérez Pérez and this is the AI Coffee Podcast. Every week we will have one episode regarding one disruptive aspect of technologies for the time to drink a cup of coffee. Today we have Carlos Rodríguez Avellán, who is a really interesting person. You will know more about him. And just to present him a little bit, I just would say that he did a, a telecommunication engineering bachelor in Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, then a master in signal processing and machine learning in the same university. And then he has a lot of experience related to data science, as he has been working for companies such as Vodafone, BT, Everest Telefonica. And now he's working as the lead NLP engineering in Fujitsu. Also, he is teaching in Universidad Europea in Madrid and the School for Digital Business a couple of years ago. So just to start, Carlos, wow, what an amazing CV you have. Thank you also for being here. <laughs> I would say that by the time that we have recorded this, uh, we have zero interviews already published. <laughs> so thank you very much. And that's also to start a little bit with the content. I would ask you, what is NLP? What is that for you? And why is it so important nowadays? First of all, well, thank you for the presentation, Alejandro. And thank you very, very much for inviting me to the AI Coffee podcast. It is an amazing project that is going from strength to strength, and it is a pleasure to, to be here with, with you today. So thank you very much for the presentation, and thank you very much again for inviting me. Let's talk about NLP. What is NLP? NLP is, is the name of the natural language processing. And you can imagine that when you talk or when you use an, a computer or when you use a virtual assistant or when you are writing an email, uh, like, for example, in, in Gmail, and Gmail recommends you the end of the sentence or the end of a word, or when you are using WhatsApp and WhatsApp uh, corrects your errors in the sentence or in the words, behind everything, behind all these, let's say, fancy processes or fancy recommendations, there are a lot of small artificial intelligence models, okay? So NLP, as, as I mentioned, it works with text, works work with, with language, and when I say language is, for example, Spanish language, English language, uh, Chinese language, all of the languages that we use, not only by text, but only the language that we use when we communicate, like, for example, now, talking between us. And it is a very, very trendy topic in the big sector that is the artificial intelligence. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, we can imagine a lot of different fields. For example, of course, natural language processing is, is one of them when we work with language. Computer vision is a big field that is when we work with images or video. For example, object detection, face recognition, this kind of topics, this kind of, of task. There are other artificial intelligence models for predicting a value in a time series. Try to predict the value in a specific stock in the stock market. We can create this kind of model. So NLP is a very trendy topic in this big sector that is artificial intelligence because nowadays we are uh, seeing a lot of breakthroughs in the sector and probably we'll talk today about some of them, Alejandro. So you mentioned that this voice also, like we are talking now through Zoom, can be detected and can be analyzed and that's part of NLP. So should I maybe be afraid of being listened or something? <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So one very typical example when working with voice, with audio, is when transcribing automatically the conversation of two people or three people or whatever. So for example, if you go to YouTube and if you watch a video, mm -hmm. uh, you can click in a button that generates automatically the subtitles the subtitle. of the video. Exactly. So this task is performed by an artificial intelligence that is able to transcribe automatically the audio of this video to text. And it helps a lot to people that don't understand the, the speaker's language or because this person is not able to hear the, the voice or the audio. So th this model helps a lot when generating these transcriptions from the audio from the videos. Imagine that YouTube wants to transcribe all the audio from the different videos manually. It's, it's impossible, or at least it's not feasible in terms of time or in terms of cost. So this is an example. 
Another example where working with audio are the um, virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa or Google Home or so on. And that's true that these virtual assistants are always listening, but the fact is that they work, or in general, they work only when you set up by voice. So for example, with Alexa, you have to say, Alexa, and then you send the information, send the order or whatever. So in general, don't be afraid about <laughs> okay. in general. <laughs> that's, that's great to know. And you mentioned that NLP is becoming really popular these days. I agree with you. And when I was looking for the information for, for this episode, I realized that there is a lot of news, a lot of mm, posts on LinkedIn, for example, talking about chat GPT. Hmm. What's that exactly? Can you explain a little bit about that and how we have this feeling of, of new thing coming? Yes. ChatGPT is a model. Uh, well, when I say model, I am referring to artificial intelligent, intelligence model. So it's like the artifact, the artificial intelligence that is able to perform any task. In that specific case, ChatGPT is an NLP model that is like magic. <laughs> let me let me explain the <laughs> let me explain that. So ChatGPT is the name of that model of that artificial intelligence that works as a conversational artificial intelligence, okay? So as I mentioned before, there are different sectors, different fields. Conversational agents or conversational models are a specific type of models in the NLP field. These models are useful when communicating with people. For example, chatbots, for example, Alexa, Google Home, and, and, and so on. Um, the, the thing is that ChatGPT is like when you talk with ChatGPT, ChatGPT responds to you like if it were a human. So let's put some example, okay? So you can ask it, you can ask ChatGPT to write a poem about a specific topic. ChatGPT will generate automatically and in real time a poem about a topic. The accuracy of that poem probably will be amazing. So you will see that the poem is correct in terms of grammar, in terms of context, the lexicon, the, the words, the, the, the rhythm, everything, everything. So of course, you will see that it will return some errors, but you will be amazed because you can ask about any topic. This is one example. Another example is for students. You can say to ChatGPT, please solve me this second degree equation. You can apply your maths knowledge and do it by yourself by hand, or you can ask to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will return you not only the solution of the equation, but also the steps that you must follow in order to solve the equation. And not only the steps of when solving the equation, but also an explanation about every step. So it's amazing because it's like if you are receiving a real-time class, not from a human, but from an artificial intelligence. Another example, imagine that you are a developer or you are a student that wants to... Wait, sorry, I, <laughs> I activated Alexa by, <laughs> by error. <laughs> well, uh, okay. She's, me, she's listening to us. Again. All the time. <laughs> that's yeah, a proof. It's, it's, that, that's a, well, that's a proof. And, and this is a good example that also these models, this artificial intelligence in, uh, sometimes fail because I <laughs> didn't say Alexa at least just now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> another example is if you are an, a student or a developer, you want to start programming in Python. And Python is a very typical language mm -hmm. programming. Okay, actually it's very, very useful and it's the top one programming language when programming artificial intelligence models, statistics, and so on, okay, in the industry. You can say to the model, please, uh, ChatGPT. Well, you don't need to say please, but <laughs> let's... <laughs> let's keep it human. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Please, uh, ChatGPT, create a module in Python that creates a model that creates artificial intelligence for recognizing faces in an image, okay? So as in the example of the equation, ChatGPT will create not only the code, not in natural language, like in English or in French or in German or in Spanish, no, no, no. In Python, it will create the world model in Python, probably it will contain errors, but the skeleton, the structure of this model will be really, really okay. This code will contain comments, 
that is amazing because sometimes developers we, we don't include comments in the code so the model outperforms the, the the way in which we program and it also will explain you the decisions or the steps for example i the model say will say okay i create this function to do this task i create this other function that performs this other task and uses this previous function and, and so on that's amazing and let me give you the, the last example for me as a person that works in that field the most let's say relevant part if you ask to chat gpt uh, please explain me why an elephant cannot drive a car so it is not to say the solution of an equation or write me code for that specific car or try to recreate a poem about a specific topic that of course are amazing features it is more about reasoning this artificial intelligence need to understand that we are talking about an elephant we are talking about a car we are talking about an action that is the elephant drives a car i don't want to know if the elephant is able or not i want to know why so this task about reasoning is amazing and chat gpt is able to explain you in that case why an elephant is not able to drive a car for us as humans it's very obvious that an elephant cannot drive a car the thing is how we can create an artifact a model that is able to perform all these different features without access to internet so that model that artificial intelligence model is like a let's say like a brain this model read a lot of wikipedia post twitter all social networks contracts poems, literature, books, a lot of different content and uh, using different NLP processes like extracting the entities. Entities are person names, uh, locations, uh, dates, telephone numbers, emails, and so on. Also understanding which words are verbs, adjectives, nouns, pronouns, and so on. And a lot of different uh, typical and classical natural language processing techniques with all of this content is able to extract the value from this information, the content from all this data, relate everything and answers you when you ask it for, for something. If someone wants to see examples, he or she just need to go to the internet, write in Google chat GPT, and you will see a lot of different examples. You will see a lot of different examples. If you want to try it by yourself, just go to I don't remember the URL. We can put in the notes of the podcast, but it's free. So you can create a, a, a free account and you can use it uh, by, by yourself. I encourage you, to all of you, to, to do this because it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Actually, I wonder what was the answer for the elephant that wasn't able to drive? <laughs> uh, the answer uh, is that, or at least the answer that I saw in example, that I saw in a LinkedIn post, and then I tried by myself using my account, start explaining that the elephant is too big to be in the car and that the car is not prepared for the is prepared for humans but it's not prepared for an elephant and the reasoning makes sense actually if, I, if you ask me that reason reason is more complex than probably the reasoning of a kid for example so it's it's, it's amazing yes that's true actually i invite people listening us to try so uh, you mentioned something about the students and teachers that maybe it could be kind of replacement of teaching or at least a way like a new kind of teaching might be happening in the future because of ChatGPT or elements like that. Do you agree that it changed a little bit the way we are teaching? That's a very, very good question and very, very trendy question because the way in which we teach or the way in which we learn is always changing, not only because modern models like ChatGPT, but also when let's think about when we didn't have internet, we must go to libraries, I mean, go to physical material. Then internet was created. And after that, a lot of homes have internet connection, very, very low internet connection, but internet connection at least. Then after the internet, a lot of different web pages like Wikipedia or other forums were created. So there is a lot of knowledge in the internet. So the way in which we learn, and of course, the way in which we teach is changing from the very beginning. 
now, nowadays, we have ChatGPT that is able to answer problems or answer questions for the homework. Uh, from my perspective, this is something that it will be very, very, very useful for students because it's like a complement for Google. So you, you can continue using Google for searching for information, for results, for, I mean, for everything. You have also, uh, you already, we already have other web pages like, for example, Wolfram Alpha. That is like Google, but for maths. For maths. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, you know, I was working there for 15 days as an internship. Really? <laughs> yes. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I, I, then <laughs> in, in another moment, I will bring with you a coffee about that because I'm interested about the, yeah. the engine of. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it was like six years ago or something like that. And when I was looking at, how they were generating these demonstrations of math that was really mm -hmm. surprising for me so now with mm -hmm. with chatgp3 which is even more simple wow it, it's even like for me it's even more interesting or more insightful right mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes yes. you you give value to things when you understand a little bit more actually yeah, let's see. <laughs> i am i am thinking of myself for example at university when i was learning python that sometimes i had a feeling of there are a lot of communities Mm. A lot of websites with many kinds of informations and stuff about the functions and how everything works and examples. But actually, when I wanted to like learn something really, like I want to try this thing or to know why this thing doesn't work, I was really frustrated because that kind of item doesn't exist. And maybe with ChatGP3, it would be better the way we teach or the way we learn. Yes, probably. Actually, I was talking uh, the other day with other professors, and one of them proposed uh, one approach that maybe nowadays makes more sense than before. The name is uh, Flipped Classroom. Flipped Classroom is a framework, let's say, in which the roles of the teacher and the roles of the students sometimes change. So in this paradigm, students are more proactive. They, they in general, work more with the contents, learn more by themselves. And the teacher, the professor is more an orientator. If we as a teachers or the teachers in general, they promote to students to use uh, this kind of technologies, not only Google, not only ChatGPT, but in general, all the technologies, techniques that are publicly available for everyone, maybe makes sense because the idea here is like, okay, let's use ChatGPT for solve all my homework. It makes no sense because, okay, you will be able to answer the same problems than before, but you are not learning. So that's not okay. Let's try to use this technology or these models in order to get access for more content, for more information in an easier way. For teachers, it's also useful because sometimes, well, not sometimes, <laughs> all the time, we need to create a content, material, exercises, and so on. This tool, ChatGPT, it's useful also to create this content in order to say, I want to create an exercise about Python programming, and I want to create this example in order to solve, I don't know, to create a calculator uh, using Python. You just can go to ChatGPT and see an example. You can copy this example or modify this example. I believe that in technology, not only about artificial intelligence, but I believe in technology as a way to make the life of the people easier. Yeah. So I, I usually try to think that artificial intelligence in general is better to improve the way we do a job or the way we do our professional life to even to humanize this part of our professional career. For example, if you are talking about teachers, I can imagine that creating exercises is really tiring sometimes and repetitive and maybe it's not the useful way to use the time and it's better to optimize their time to be maybe more focused on the students on how they can learn from the exercises yeah actually these kind of models like ChatGPT are useful not only for teaching or for learning but are also useful when creating nlp models so for example in my day by day i have to create or my team we have to create nlp models for understanding documents for understanding the information that is in, contained in these documents for example in legal contracts in financial documents financial reports in documents in the healthcare sector one very typical task in nlp is name it entity recognition name it entity recognition is the task when extracting person names location dates and so on so 
for every sector, for every document type, you need to create or you need to reuse somehow different models. With ChatGPT, you can send the document or, well, you can send the text of the documents and say to ChatGPT, please, in this electronic history of a patient in a hospital, extract the name of treatments or the name of drugs or the doses or whatever. And in general, it works. That's true that the performance of that response probably will not be as higher as if you are using a specific model for that task, but the results are very, very, very promising. So this is also another use case when using this kind of generative model. Okay, and what is your opinion about the future of NLP, Carlos? And also, is it sustainable? Or maybe the future should be linked also to this part of sustainability. What's your opinion about that? So about the future of NLP, I think that the future of NLP looks really, really promising. So actually today we are seeing advances that like 20 or 30 years ago were reserved only for uh, science fiction, uh, for books or for films. Um, but even some of them, some of these advances, like for example, ChatGPT or or other models, like for example, DALI is a model that is has created by OpenAA. OpenAA is the company that created uh, ChatGPT. But this model is not working only with text, works with text and images. This model creates an image based on a description. So even some of these models or these advances are really, really promising. Like only just five years ago were uh, unimaginable. So in the short term, medium term, and let's see long term, the future of NLP looks really, really promising. Actually, there is a huge community around not only artificial intelligence, but around NLP with companies like Hugging Face working very hard in standardizing the way in which we work in NLP, in which we create, we define, we serialize the, the artificial intelligence models. And also when sharing different NLP models that companies, organizations, and people create, and also corpus. A corpus is a set of books, a set of documents that are very, very useful when creating this kind of, uh, of models. So the future of NLP is very, very promising. But as you mentioned, sustainability is something very, very important and is not always taken into account. Let him talk about that. So when we want to create a model, this mo artificial intelligence model. So for example, let's imagine that you go to the bank and you want a credit. <laughs> the bank almost always uses a computer uh, that uses an artificial intelligence model or um, some kind of algorithms that determines at some extent if you will receive or if you deserve this credit or not. When you ask to the bank to the person involved in this operation, you will receive an answer, yes or no. And if yes, well, of course, you will receive more information, but in general, you will receive or yes or not. But if you receive a no and you want to know why, sometimes the person involved in that operation will say no, because the credit model or the risk model determines that and it's okay, but I want to know the decision. I want to understand the decision of that model. And it's like, okay, no, but this is a model, a mathematical model, an algorithm, artificial intelligence that is perfect. No, 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 that's, that's not correct. This is a very, very important topic. If, for example, the artificial intelligence contains some kind of bias. You talk about bias in another podcast, Alejandro, for example, very, very important topic in, in artificial intelligence. Bias can impact in the, in the results. So for example, if we use Twitter, for example, as a corpus to train a natural language processing model, you, you can imagine the, the way in which we or all the people write in Twitter. So the language and the text collected from the internet are sexist because the language by itself is sexist. So if we use sexist language to train a model, the model will be sexist. So that's, the idea is very simple, but it is not as simple to implement mechanisms to avoid or to mitigate that bias. We will be building sexist conversational artificial intelligence. Okay, This is one example of bias when working in NLP. 
a different example is when we think about the requirements, the hardware that we need to create models. And now I am not talking about when we create a model or when the students create models in the university. No, no, no. I am talking about these huge models, like for example, ChatGPT, like for example, GPT-3 or GPT-2 uh, before, like for example, BERT. There are very, very huge artificial intelligence models that only a few companies in the world are, are able to create because these models are huge in terms of size. If you, if you imagine the, the model is like a file of uh, hundreds of gigabytes. And in order to train these models, you need very, very powerful computers. Actually, you need the, one of the most powerful computers, use the most advanced techniques in terms of algorithms and so on. And you need also a lot of time. So if you need very powerful computers and you need very uh, a lot of time, what you need is a lot of energy. So you need a lot of electricity to train these models. Of course, it is very important or it's very, very useful in general to create these models. But sometimes we are creating these kind of models only to see how far we can go or how big we can create these kind of models. So electricity consuming is something very, very important that we need to take also into account when creating these large models. If we think about blockchain, and if we think about blockchain, not only blockchain, but if we think about cryptocurrencies, the reality is that cryptocurrencies, for example, Bitcoin, uses a lot of energy in order to perform different operations. So one of the not very good points about cryptocurrencies is electricity that you need to use cryptocurrencies in the, in the blockchain. So this is similar. It's when creating very huge models, we are using electricity. So if no one will use these models, or if this model is not useful, and imagine if actually if this model is also biased, we are using a lot of electricity, maybe with no with no sense or not 100% sense. So from my perspective, when creating these kind of models or to carry out these processes, maybe we need to implement this kind of techniques or try to think about to reduce this, this, this amount of resources that we need. And actually, this is something very, very trendy nowadays in the in the artificial intelligence uh, sector and is okay let's try to do the same but with low resources with smaller models with less data with more faster ways to compute the algorithms and, and so on okay so this is also something that the community is working on very very important to take into account yes that's true and i will maybe do another episode about that because i feel that that's a really insightful topic both of them, actually, you mentioned the transparency of algorithms, which is a key fact now. Uh, that's the moment with the AI Act and other topics. Mm -hmm. And also the fact of energy consumption uh, related to AI. I feel that maybe there is a possibility to reduce this or even to try to optimize as much as possible, maybe green sources from energy or other, even maybe to, to implement methods of, of saving energy or optimizing that, yeah, of course. We are finishing. So I want to ask all of you when you are coming to this podcast, how do you like coffee? Uh, <laughs> I think that I like coffee every four or five hours. <laughs> I mean, I love black coffee. I also like latte, cafe latte with, with milk and without sugar. I don't like sugar in coffee. <laughs> I think that I, I drink too much coffee because when I wake up, I drink one coffee, of course. <laughs> then let's say two hours later, uh, yeah, two, three hours later, I drink another coffee. After having lunch, I drink another coffee. And then before dinner, yeah, another coffee for sure. So three, four coffees uh, in a normal day. So I love coffee, only coffee. So, <laughs> Perfect. Okay. so you, you need to publish more, more podcasts <laughs> in order to follow you. The, the in order to hear. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. And just how, how audience can contact you? Hmm. Uh, yes. So if you want to contact me or to do whatever, to ask something or just to chat, feel free to contact me by my LinkedIn account. Okay, I will put it to the notes of the episode as well. And thank you very much for being here. 
it has been a pleasure to be with you today and to share these really insightful things. And I hope that audience also uh, think that way. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, Alejandro, for inviting me to your podcast. For me, it has been a pleasure to be here and good luck. You don't need that, but good luck for the upcoming podcast and see you soon. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Alejandro. Thanks for being here one more week. If you liked it, please subscribe to the podcast and to the newsletter in alejandroperezperez.com. Please share both with your friends and relatives and don't forget to give me five stars in Apple Podcasts and Spotify. See you next week. Bye bye.